Hey everyone. Hi, Henny. He's looking at me. Henry, do you want to hear the Bible? I hope he stays put. <laughs> okay, let's jump into it so we can read the Bible to a cute kitty named Henny. Okay. We are uh, Leviticus. Sorry, let's see. I have to look it up. Leviticus. Oops. Hold on one second. Leviticus 20. Do, do, do. Okay, Leviticus 20, starting at verse 10. If a man commits adultery with another man's wife, with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress are to be put to death. If a man has sexual relations with his father's wife, he has dishonored his father. Both the man and the woman are to be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man has sexual relations with his daughter-in-law, both of them are to be put to death. What they have done is a perversion. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man has sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. They are to be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man marries both a woman and her mother, it is wicked. Both he and they must be burned in the fire so that no wickedness will be among you. If a man has sexual relations with an animal, he is to be put to death and you must kill the animal. If a woman approaches an animal to have sexual relations with it, kill both the woman and the animal. They are to be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man marries his sister, the daughter of either his father or his mother, and they have sexual relations, it is a disgrace. They are to be publicly removed from their people. He has dishonored his sister and will be held responsible. If a man has sexual relations with a woman during her monthly period, he has exposed the source of her flow, and she has also uncovered it. Both of them are to be cut off from their people. Do not have sexual relations with the sister of either your mother or your father, for that would dishonor a close relative. Both of you will be held responsible. If a man has sexual relations with his aunt, he has dishonored his uncle. They will be held responsible. They will die childless. If a man marries his brother's wife, it is an act of impurity. He has dishonored his brother. They will be childless. Keep all my decrees and laws and follow them so that the land where I am bringing you to live may not vomit you out. You must not live according to the customs of the nations. I'm going to drive out before you because they did all these things. I abhorred them. But I said to you, you will possess their land. I will give it to you as an inheritance, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God who has set you apart from the nations. You must therefore make a distinction between clean and unclean animals and between unclean and clean birds. Do not defile yourselves by any animal or bird or anything that moves along the ground, those that I have set apart as unclean for you. You are to be holy to me because I, the Lord, am holy, and I have set you apart from the nations to be my own. A man or woman who is a medium or spiritist among you must be put to death. You are to stone them. Their blood will be on their own heads. Okay, that's the end of Leviticus chapter 20. And, um, you know, it's a laying down of the law. <laughs> and it's interesting because, um, you know, it, it, it's, very direct and of course um it makes a lot of sense everything <laughs> i mean it, it's tough though um but you know what i think it, it, it's interesting because um abraham you know lived before this and the bible says that he believed and it was accounted to him as righteousness um but abraham was married to sarah who was actually his half-sister. 
So, but this was before, you know, obviously before this law, before Leviticus and, and the, you know, the giving of the law. But, you know, keeping in mind all of this, um, it's like, I guess, capital punishment. Um, it, it, it's good to keep Galatians 3 in mind as we read through Leviticus because, you know, we find out in the New Testament that if we break even one little point of the law, it means we've broken it all. So even if you don't do any of these things, you know, if you've, say, done one little thing, um, it means you've fallen short of all of it. And Galatians 3, which we read yesterday, lets us know that, you know, the law is a, a tutor leading us to Christ and um, that he fulfills the law so that in him, when we have his spirit, we live by his spirit. And so thus, you know, follow the spirit, live by the spirit, and then fulfill the law by virtue of the fact that we have Christ living in in us. And of course, that's not to say that we can do whatever, you know, it's like, because if you have the spirit, you, you don't want to, you know, go off and do whatever, um, you know, break, break all these laws, you know, you want to kind of grow in your faith and, and um, grow in, in maturity in Christ. But, um, okay, that's all I wanted to say about that. Now let's go on to Acts ch chapter 6. In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained the Hebraic Jews oh, complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and we'll give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Okay, let's stop there at verse 7. Um, that's encouraging. Um, yeah, it's interesting that um, what what's standing out here? Oh yeah, that a that a large number of priests became um, believers. I think that's really interesting. Also, what's interesting is that there were you know Hellenistic Jews and Hebraic Jews. So you know the Hellenistic Jews were just really influenced by Greek and Roman culture, and then the Hebraic Jews were you know very Hebraic. But um, it's interesting when he mentions do, 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 where was it oh um nicholas from antioch a convert to judaism so he was a gentile who became um who converted to judaism and then you know was a became a believer in christ i don't know i think that's interesting for some reason then of course I don't know if you know what happens to Stephen, but you'll find out. Oh, poor Stephen. But it's a really cool story, so we'll, we'll read about Stephen tomorrow. But um, 
we'll say a prayer and I guess this will be a shorter video because my videos lately have been like marathon sessions <laughs> okay look how cute Penny is well, after I pray I'll say the magic word and he'll wake up okay not magic is in real magic okay Lord, um, thank you for life. Thank you for your word. Thank you for fellowship. And thank you for bringing, um, you know, using technology to bring us together. Um, I pray for each person tonight that you bless them. I pray for comfort. I pray for joy um, for, for people who need joy, Lord, you know, in this world. Um, it, it can squeeze the joy out of us, especially, uh, I mean, it's normal for us to be disturbed, but we ask for joy, Lord. Um, I pray for, for those who need joy, that you, you just, just open that up in their hearts. Your joy is our strength. I pray also, Lord, for, um, anyone needing comfort that you just comfort them comfort them with your joy and i pray and, and your word says that you sing over us so i pray that they would feel you singing over them and delighting in them pray for those who feel lost and need a guidance and direction and purpose that you provide that and for anyone who's Self-esteem is at zero. I pray you would increase it. Um, I, I pray that you would help me with, I don't know, just feeling better about myself because I, I don't feel that great. But I, I'm starting to feel better. But I just ask for that. And just pray for light in the darkness, Lord. Your light shines brightest in the darkest night. The stars shine brightest in the darkest night. So, um, you know, when all that artificial light isn't competing with the real light. <laughs> so I just pray for your light to really shine bright. And I lift all these things up to you, Lord. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for the peace of Israel. Pray for the um, people in Gaza that you lead comfort and guide and especially the believers and for those who aren't believers we just ask that you reveal yourself to them God because you are a God you are love your word says that you are love you know in reading Leviticus it, it's hard for me sometimes to see the love because it sounds so very direct and like whoa but that's why jesus came lord you pr you made a way you, you are the way <laughs> you provided yourself and, and and your messiah jesus anyway lord i just ask for a clarity for wisdom um and just for peace but we know that ultimately it comes from you and one day it will come. And so that's why we pray that your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. God bless everyone. And thanks again for your comments and they're really beautiful. And um, there's, thanks for sharing and being vulnerable. All right. God bless. There's Henny. Oh, I'm supposed to say the, the word. Okay, hold on. His favorite toy. He heard the word toy. Henny, where's Bug? <laughs> He's like, okay, I know your number. Well, I'll play with, we'll play with Bug. You want to play with Bug? Okay, he's waking up, so I'm going to go play with him. All right, everybody, bye.